All right, welcome to Woodshed number 10. I'm John Lamberton. Today we're talking about footwork and juke, uh, and I'm for fun calling this Pythagorean juke, and so you'll find out what that means soon enough. But uh, in this lesson, we're going to be talking about basically applying uh, three to two tempo ratios as polytempos and how this is very similar to Pythagorean tuning uh, as it would apply to actually like choosing tones, but we're talking about tempos instead of tones today. So um, in this lesson, we're going to you know, review number nine, which had number nine, which was the introduction to footwork rhythm, rhythm and uh, basically, you know, the application of the three plus three plus two sort of division of rhythm that often comes up in juke and footwork. Um, and last time I also mentioned uh, the ratio of nine to eight, uh, which is an interval. And so we'll talk about how that in Pythagorean tuning is called the epogdoom. I'm not sure if that's the correct pronunciation, but um, it's basically a major second. So um, then to sort of take this as far as we can while still making it musical, I'd like to talk about uh, accessing the 27th harmonic. And this is something that you can't really do uh, with pitches that easily as a you know human or you know, uh, just because it's it's going to be really high up there. Uh, and so you need a very, 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 very low or, um, you know, in this case, slow fundamental rate. Uh, so we'll talk about using a, a lower octave of the tempo to access these higher harmonics. And um, then basically approximating the rhythms from last time, the three plus three plus two in this new rhythmic grid. So let's go ahead and get into it. So we talked about the idea of a tempo octave and so much like the tone a440 you know if you divide it by two so it's uh, 220 that's still going to be what we call an a in western music so there's octave equivalents and similarly you know if you take uh, 440 and multiply it by two and get 880 then that's an octave up and so basically this uh, multiplication or division by two raised to some power is going to you know always be an octave basically so um, whether it's dividing by four dividing by eight if you divide it by three that's going to be more like a subharmonic or a harmonic depending on which direction you're going um, and so that's that's something that we'll get to but i just wanted to remind everybody of the idea of a tempo octave um, and so you know if we look at 160 beats per minute which isn't a tone by any means, it's a tempo, but, you know, beats per minute is a, a rate relative to, uh, you know, the minute. It's how many things can you fit into a minute. And if we talk about hertz, that's how many things can you fit into a second. So they're very similar. It's just, you know, ones for the second and ones for the minute. And uh, so if we take this idea and uh, we wanted to explore more partials from our fundamental we can actually do this by using a much lower octave of the tempo. So, um, you know, 160 beats per minute as our fundamental means you can't really hit uh, many harmonics because, you know, <laughs> to say uh, 640 beats per minute is just absurd. And that's uh, the type of stuff that you'd expect to see in like shredding circles on uh, YouTube where people are seeing how many, you know, notes they can play per second in uh, kind of you know, uh, uh, pissing contest way. So anyway, um, if we use a lower fundamental though, say, you know, 80 beats per minute or 40 beats per minute or 20 beats per minute, then we can actually reach some of these upper partials. Um, and at the same time, 160 beats per minute will just be involved anyway. So, um, you know, last time we talked about basically the dotted quarter note as uh, kind of the opposite of a triplet where you know, a triplet, you're fitting three into the space of one or three into the space of two. And that ultimately means that you're sort of doing everything 50% faster and, or, you know, each duration is 50% or is <laughs> going to go by, uh, you know, 50% faster, which means overall it is going to be two thirds of the length. Um, and similarly, you could do it the other direction. Uh, with a dotted note and that is essentially saying that it's making the note 50 percent longer which means that it's slower and so uh when we did the 160 beats per minute tempo and then do triplets it's kind of hinting at 120 beats per minute or 240 beats per minute 
And similarly, if we go the other direction, it's going to be um, basically like 106 point something. And so that's the same temporal relation, but going the opposite direction. And so this, uh, I have the spelling here a little bit incorrect. Uh, it's E-P-O-G-D-O-O-N. So epog epogduon, I, I don't speak ancient Greek, so uh, not sure on that. But basically, uh, when you do that tempo relation that we talked about, and it gets the 9 against 8 ratio, or 9 to 8 ratio, it's going to present as a major second. But the way that came up in Juke, the way that they got there is basically by doing a perfect fifth up and a perfect fifth down. And so it gives you a major ninth, which we treat as equivalent to a major second. And so you can see with this little visual how if we treat G as our home base, 160 beats per minute, and we did the dotted notes, that would be like playing a C, a perfect uh, fourth up or a perfect fifth down, and then hitting the D tone would be a perfect fifth up. And so I think this is a kind of interesting relationship. And when you hear a lot of footwork, they basically play with how similar these are. You might get a rhythm that's, you know, in 4-4 four, four, or, you know, basically with eight eighth notes or 16 16th notes, but then it will shift to a triplet grid and almost the same rhythm is given to, but it's just a little bit off. Maybe they're even stacked together and then you can really hear, you know, just how close they are. Um, but they're still kind of like a, a duple versus triple feel. So uh, I want to explore this a little bit further though, because this hints at poly tempo. And, you know, when we talked about Demon Maroney's pulse fields, the idea behind that was to be able to pull from a different tempo or borrow a different tempo altogether um, by way of having just different pulses going. And so like the dotted pulse or the triplet pulse, which hint at different tempos, we could sort of take this a little bit further. So, you know, uh, like I said, the, the major second uh, m more often presents as a major ninth. And so that's like stacking the three to ratio. So if you start with four, you add 50%, you get six, and then you add 50% to that and you get nine. And so that's basically the, you know, the stacked fifth um, triad. And so <clears throat> if we talk about Pythagorean tuning, which is, you know, an old tuning method that it has its problems, like the major thirds are going to not be particularly resonant. They're going to be kind of, you know, it's an 81 over 64 ratio instead of a 5 over 4 ratio, which are that's very similar, but it's not going to have the same crisp resonance that you get with a just uh, third. But anyway, so if you start here on the unison of D, so 1 to 1, then, you know, we do the 3 over 2, so that's essentially our triplet, which is a perfect fifth. And if you do it if you do it once more, uh, then you get nine over eight. So that's a major second and you could keep on going up. And so, you know, nine times three is 27, 27 times three is 81, etc. So, um, we aren't going to really go past 27 because, you know, like I said, first of all, the major third doesn't actually sound that great. Um, it would be better to do a five over four, which maybe we'll do next time. Um, but we could also go the opposite direction. Where is this slide? There we are, other direction. Um, and so, you know, we could start here with the one to one D, then do uh, a perfect fifth down, which they're writing as four over three. This is from Wikipedia, by the way. Uh, so that's a perfect fourth or a perfect fifth down. Similarly, a minor seventh is essentially a major second down. So there's always this complement to each interval. Okay, so um, here's the ascending version again. And if we, uh, you know, keep on doing this with tempos, you know, there's no reason that we can't treat the tempo as a frequency or sort of act as if it is a tone. Um, it's just an extremely slow tone. So 160 beats per minute, um, if we treat that as the unison, uh, one over one, then we do three over two, that gets us uh, 240, or we can, you know, basically anytime that a tempo is, out of the reasonable range of tempos. Like if you have 640 beats per minute, you can just keep on dividing it by two until it's reasonable again. So in this case, we go 160, 120, 180, 135, 
and then by the time we're at 81 over 64, we're at uh, 101.25 beats per minute. Now, I'm going to just go ahead and say that anytime that you start getting these decimals, it's not really worth going any further. Um, the decimal, like there's nothing wrong with the decimal and there's nothing that's like more difficult about that tempo. I just, it's a sign that we're kind of, you know, splitting hairs too much for uh, human playability. So anyway, you could, like I said, you could go through the subharmonics as well. But what I'm going to suggest is that we move from the 160 beats per minute idea to something slower, like 80 beats per minute, 40 beats per minute, or 20 beats per minute, because that way we can borrow more complex tempos based on these harmonics. So it's not going to be reasonable to get 81 in the space of even 20 beats per minute, because 20 beats per minute as a tempo means that something is happening every three seconds, uh, like there's an impulse every three seconds, or it's basically <laughs> like 0 0.3333 hertz, uh, one third of a hertz. Uh, so it's one third of a cycle per second, one cycle every three seconds. Um, now that's relatively reasonable to access the 27th partial I was talking about because, you know, three seconds, that's 3000 milliseconds, divide that by 27. It's, it's not crazy fast yet. Um, but I'm going to show you how that we could, how we could access this, uh, 27th partial by basically just repeatedly applying the three to two tempo modulation, which is a, a modulation by a triplet. And uh, this will eventually get us there. And I just keep on dropping it by a rhythmic octave until it fits in place and is kind of physically plausible. Well, so here we have, uh, you know, we start basically with four, four at 160. That's a whole note. Then next I'm dropping the tempo down an octave. So this bar is spelled differently. Basically, it's notated as one half note in a one two meter at 80 beats per minute. But it's the exact same uh, measure as before. It just looks different, but it sounds the exact same. And so I do that twice more. So we get down to one eight uh, at 20 beats per minute. So that means that each of these eighth notes happens every three seconds. Now, next, I'm dividing that by two. So this is essentially the second harmonic if we treat 20 beats per minute as our fundamental. Now the triplet is our third harmonic. And now I've re-notated that bar. And uh, so I've modulated to the tempo of the triplet. So now it is 30 beats per minute in 316. And now I've popped the tempo up to 60, uh, brought down the meter to 38. I, yet again, it's the exact same thing, and I do that once more, so we're at 120 beats per minute in 3-4. And that's just because we don't want to really get up into the 64th note realm, because it's just going to be ugly and difficult to parse. So now I've done triplets with that 3-3, three, three, we get 9, so this is equivalent to the ninth partial. Then we get, uh, I, I respell that yet again, so um, let's see here, one, 180 beats per minute in nine eight and then i drop it down uh to nine four at the same tempo and then i do triplets in that nine four so now we have 27 triplets and you could renotate this yet again at 135 beats per minute in 27 16. now 27 16 might sound super crazy but you know it's a lot less crazy than say 29 16 because 29 is prime 27 is a cube like it's three to the third power. So you can think of it as three with some triplets with some embedded triplets. And I would show this as embedded triplets, but the program I'm using doesn't let me do that. And so yet again, I move it back to four, four at 80 beats per minute. Um, and this is a 27 over 16 polyrhythm that this is an ugly way to notate it, but I just want to show that these are the exact same rhythm. They just are written totally differently. Okay. So, um, what I think is interesting now, and this is a technique that I've used uh, a huge amount over the years, um, is to basically approximate a rhythm from one rhythmic grid into another rhythmic grid. So, you know, we talked about 3 plus 3 plus 2 at 160 beats per minute last time. And if we want to basically 
take away the grid that's behind that rhythm and put a new one in that's 27 instead of 16 or instead of eight, then it means that everything's going to move a lot faster, but we can still have, you know, similar proportions. So what I mean by this is like, if we have uh, three plus three plus two equaling eight, then that three eight is going to be 37.5%. And that happens twice. And then you have a quarter, which is 25%. So it's basically 37.5, 37.5, 25. Um, now, if we multiply our 27 meter by these percentages, then we're gonna get some numbers that, you know, it's it's 10.125 and 6.75. But if we just round these up to the nearest integers or round down actually, so that we still get a sum of 27, then we can actually approximate that three plus three plus two quite accurately. So we would just switch it over to 10 plus 10 plus seven. So you know, that might sound totally different, but uh, I mean, <laughs> in, by description, it might sound totally different, but by playing it, it sounds almost exactly the same, provided we switch the tempo. So as you can see here, this is a little pie chart. You can see it's the difference between 25.9% and 25%, and then 37% versus 37.5%. So they're very close, and you can't really tell from looking uh, very quickly that these are different rhythms. Cool. So in notation, it would look like this. I'm putting putting this at uh, 270 beats per minute, which is kind of a stupid tempo that I wouldn't suggest using. But I just wanted to illustrate that it's the same as this 160 beats per minute. What's cool about uh, Juke in this way is that since we're so used to doing 4-4 four, four for everything, <coughs> excuse me, and 4-4 uh, you know, four, four is equivalent to 16-16, um, it makes, oops, it makes... <laughs> it makes the uh, the tempo modulation pretty nice numbers if we're dealing with 160 and 1616 as our meter. So if you want to switch to 27, that means you just go to 270. If you want to switch to 13, you just go 130. If you want to go to, you know, 53, you go to 530 beats per minute. Uh, so it has this nice sort of quality where... The math is really easy because we're dealing with 160, sorry, 160 and 16, and you just have to sort of make sure that they have that uh, correct ratio. So, um, like I said, this is going to sound exactly the same, but the underlying grid behind it, which is, you know, it's a kind of tool, cool tool to be able to be playing a rhythm, and then you reveal the underlying grid, and this is sort of hidden tactic stuff that I, I mentioned last time. Um, but, you know, this three raised to the third power sort of rhythm instead of two raised to the fourth power, it references this idea of like the hypercubic waltz and the, the grid uh, is, sorry, uh, this references the hypercubic waltz, which I talked about previously in uh, the Jade Visions hypercubic waltz video, which, uh, you know, I might have to redo because the sound quality is a little bit sketchy, but uh, it's it's a whole different ballgame. It's like, a recursive waltz instead of like a binary recursion. So anyway, I think this is a cool technique to explore and we'll get into this a little bit more, but um, just to summarize everything from this uh, footwork often plays with the nine to eight relationship. And this is usually by way of dotted uh, quarter notes and triplets and how similar those are. Um, and it's essentially a major second or a you know set of stacked fifths. And so this opens up the door to playing with poly tempo in Juke and Footwork, but I would suggest using a lower tempo, not 150 per se instead of 160, but something that is, you know, a division of 160 by two raised to some power. So that would be 80, 40, 20, 10. And 20 is nice because it means basically a three second period. Uh, 40 is also nice because it means a one and a half second period. So, um, you know, those are both cool options, but uh, we showed that you can reach the 27th harmonic by stacking these modulations of tempo, which is equivalent to a perfect fifth, and then just adjusting down to a reasonable octave the way that you would. If you kept on, on ascending in fifths, you would inevitably want to have it in a scale. So you don't just keep on ascending uh, in fifths, you would reduce it down to the octave. 
And lastly, we can approximate some of our standard 4-4 juke rhythms in this new time grid uh, by just doing some basic calculations. So anyway, thanks for watching. Um, I'll be doing more videos like this on footwork and other topics. If you have a topic in mind you'd like to hear about, please let me know. Um, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel, commenting on the video, leaving a thumbs up. It helps with the algorithm and all that. And if you'd like to support the creation of this content, head over to patreon.com slash Options start off as low as a few bucks a month. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.